Hi, in our next lecture, we will concentrate on the degenerative changes affecting the lumbar spine. By definition, lumbar spinal canal stenosis means there will be a reduction in the diameter of the spinal canal, and this may result either congenital stenosis or acquired, and most of the acquired are degenerative. Here, the pathologies are similar to what we see in uh, cervical spine. There will be loss of water content of the soft tissue, resulting in lumbar disc protrusion or bulging, facet joint osteoarthritis with ligantum flavum hypertrophy. But here, there is certain pathological entity affecting the vertebral and the plates called modic changes. We will come to it in a minute. Also, there will be a reduction in the height of the uh, disc, disc bulge, and hypertrophied ligamentum flavum. The clinical presentations also are widely variable, and we can uh, collect them into a major categories according to their pathophysiology. Number one, we have a neurogenic claudication, which means there will be a dermatomal pain, sensory changes, weakness, according to the nerve root that will be affected. And this aggravated by standing and walking and needs the patient to sit, usually for more than half an hour, in order to gain relief of the pain. And this will be also elicited with lumbar extension, but there is no other signs of vascular compromise like in the peripheral vascular insufficiency. The spondylotic changes that affect the facet joint in the lumbar spine will result in what we call facet joint syndrome. And in this syndrome, the pain will be predominantly uh, in the lower back, and usually it will be improved during motion. The pain will be aggravated by extension and rotation, and the pain often located with the, in the buttock, in the groin, may radiate to the posterior thigh, but it is of a non-radicular origin. Usually the patient will feel stiff when he's waking in the morning. دائما المريض يقول لك أنا أول ما أقعد الصبح جسمي صاير خشبة بعد فد عشر دقائق ورا ما أتحرك يلا يروح هذا التشنج اللي لازم الظهر. Instability syndrome when the end stage of the vertebra becomes by degenerative changes unstable. We will have what we call instability syndrome. In this, there will be a mechanical low back pain. In another word, that means the pain will be increased during motion. Axial pain is here, bell facet joint syndrome. And the vibration will aggravate the pain, for example, driving a car or climbing a stair. Pain will be felt also suddenly by movement. هواية uh, تشوف مريض يقول لك أنا جت مدني مثلا شنو الداعة والله ومجرد أنه uh, وقفت حسيت مثل الطقة صارت بظهري uh, وبعدين كل شيء ما قدرت أسوي ولزمني ظهري تشنج قوي هذا هو one of the sort of instability syndrome and حقيقة هي هاي الحالة الوحيدة اللي البيشنت ما يجي may get benefit by wearing a brace. Clinical signs, El facet joint syndrome. <coughs> pain will be aggravated by extension and by rotation. احنا دائما نقول للمريض انه سوي flexion مثل وضعية ركوع الصلاة الى الامام. اذا صار عنده ألم هذا ممكن يكون ديسك ممكن يكون مصل سبازم عادة المصل سبازم يكون ألم فقط في الظهر الديسك هيرنيشن ينزل البين إلى 
أطراف السفلى إذا بالعكس كان عنده بين وصار سوى بيندينج فيرورد مثل وضعية ركوع الصلاة وراح من الألم هذا معناه This is a spinal canal stenosis بعدها يقول للمريض بسرعة ارجع إلى وضعيتك المستقيمة This sudden hyper extension ممكن يسبب ألم جماعة الفاسيت جوينت سندروم فإذا صار عند المريض ألم تقول له روتيت تو ذا رايت اند روتيت تو ذا ليفت إذا صار عنده بين بالجهتين فمعناه هذا بايلاترال سباينال فاسيت جوينت سندروم وإذا من جهة واحدة فهذا يونيلاترال فاسيت جوينت سندروم هنا البلين اكس راي ويل نوت بي فيري هيرفول ان ستادينج ذا لمبر سباين وذ اونلي ون اكسبشن از ذا فانكشنال فيو ات از ذا لاترال ريفليكشن اند اكستنشن فيلمز ذات مي اليسيت ذير ويل بي ا سبلكسيشن اور سيجمنتال موشن اند انديكيت انستابيلتي فور اكزامبل ان ذيس كيس وين يو سي ات اتس اولموست ناثينج abnormal here but with the flexion and the extension we see there is subluxation of the facet joint and abnormal movement of the vertebrae which indicate there is some sort of instability in the spine CT scan is used only in cases there will be a contraindication for the use of the MRI like in case of using pacemakers we may use also Milo CT scan by injecting a dye in through the lumbar puncture and also it is of important for post-operative uh, assessment of the lumbar fusion if you do a surgery and you put certain implant and you want to see whether this implant that you use have a fuse with the normal bone or not MRI is superior and it will be show a lot of uh, Uh, multiplanar capabilities and a lot of tissue contrast like in this MRI we can see the disc protrusion with ligand and flavum hypertrophy and severe narrowing of the spinal canal in this axial view you see there is a disc bulge with hypertrophied ligand and flavum, severe narrowing of the spine, and facet joint spondylosis on the left side. The modic changes are vertebral and the plate changes that occur on the adjacent disc area. There is three types of it. We have to have T2 and T1 image. If the T1 image, we have vertebral and changes that is hypo intense, and in T2 it is hyper intense. This means water edema of the bone marrow of the vertebral and plate. This is what we call modic change type 1. If both on T2 and T1, The air vertebral end plate was hyper intense. This indic indicates bone marrow fatty changes, and this is modic change type 2. If both on T2 and T1 both are hypo intense, this indicates bone marrow sclerosis, and this is modic changes type 3. Treatment here it is very variable and depends on a lot of uh, domains. Our main aim is pain relief, improvement of the health related to quality of life and improvement of the work capacity of the patient. But what are the domains that will affect on the decision of which type of treatment? For example, medical factors. If the patient have something contraindicated to do a surgery, then we cannot perform surgery. Psychological factors, if the patient was psychologically unstable, whatever you do to the patient, he will remain complaining of pain. Sociological factors, you may want to perform certain surgery that requires a very expensive implants to be written in the back of the patient, but the patient may, may not have the money or insurance 
to uh, afford you this type of treatment and work related factors differ whether you are treating a football player who want to again to his games for example or you are treating an old patient who only want to go to the bathroom without assistance so this also will affect on the type of treatment you want to give the patient in general we favor non-operative treatment if there is a structural alteration which is mild to moderate and if the pain is of short duration less than six months and if the patient every now and then the intensity and the location of the pain is different and there is absence of any neurological deficit and if the patient symptoms comes and goes the non-operative treatment consists of analgesia physical exercises and psychological intervention in patient who is psychologically unstable for the operative treatment it is indicated when there is a severe instability failure to relieve pain for more than six months of medical therapy or there is progressive neurological deficit but you have to have psychologically stable patient very important the treatment could be either surgical treatment decompressive non-instrumental fusion or instrumental spinal fusion or spinal fusion with fixation or any combination of previous ones in decompression laminectomy we usually do a midline skin incision dissection of the muscles laterally put self-retaining retractors then we remove the spinous processes and the lamina I try to decompress the thecal sac and I try to decompress the intervertebral foramens on both sides if needed non-instrumental fusion is done by uh, removal of the capsule of the facet joints and fill it with bone substitute taken usually from the iliac crest so that it will eliminate any movement of the facets and create fusion the disc also can be removed and put an autograft and we can do fixation by particular screws also this will uh, facilitate rapid mobility of the patient following surgery now for the lumbar disc syndrome it's a special clinical entity in which there will be tear in the annulus so it is not just a disc bulge like in the stenosis but there will be a tear in the annulus with herniation of the nucleus outside and this either will be laterally affecting the nerve root or centrally leading to stenosis here the leg pain will be more than the back pain because the pain will be predominantly a radicular pain there will be limitation of the back movement especially forward deflection because by forward deflection you are uh, narrowing the intervertebral disc dimension the pain is radicular so it will be dermatomal sensory changes even the motor weakness and reflex changes in a form of hyporeflexy according to the which nerve root have been affected also there will be exacerbation by cough sneezing straining this is also uh, worse in the sitting position and usually most of the patient cannot sit when you see them at always standing the pain will be relieved if the patient lying in bed with a slight flexion of the knee and the thigh this is also because this position will increase the size of the intervertebral foramen you can perform straight leg raising test and it will be positive if the pain elicited by elevation of less than 60 degrees and also femoral stretch test the uh, type of disc herniation according to its site of tear can be divided into central disc herniation which will result in 
spinal canal stenosis or if the herniation just beside the facet it is called subarticular or at the level of the foramen it is called foraminal or outside the foramen it's called extreme lateral or extra foraminal the commonness actually is the subarticular and the foraminal and both of them we call it posterolateral disc herniation usually by anatomy when we have l4 spine and l5 spine the normal nerve root that exit from the l4 5 intervertebral foramen is l4 nerve root but since the disc herniation commonness is posterolateral the posterolateral disc usually will not hit the l4 but it will hit the nerve that descending downward which is in this condition is an l5 nerve root so it usually comes as an mcq the nerve root exit from l4 l5 is usually l4 nerve root but the disc herniation at l4 5 will hit usually l5 nerve root so in general in l3 l4 disc herniation the affected root will be l4 this is not a frequency very rare usually the pain will be distributed in the femoral area the sensory changes will affect the anesthesia of the medial side of the leg and there will be weakness of the dorsiflexion and in other words there will be a foot drop and we have hyporeflexia of the knee jerk and l5 root usually affected by l4 5 disc herniation it is very frequent usually the pain will be on the sciatic area the sensory changes will affect the lateral part of the leg and the dorsal foot here will be weakness of the hallux longus which means weakness in the extension of the big toy and l 5s1 usually the affected nerve root will be l5 it's also quite common distribution of the pain will be sciatic the sensory changes will affect the lateral part of the foot here with the plantar reflection will be affected and the patient cannot stand on him over his tip toys and the weakness will be in the ankle hyperflexia and the ankle jerk here the investigations x-rays actually are not helpful the CT scan only if there is a contraindication but the gold standard is the MRI we may consider EMG if you are looking for other causes this is very beautiful of you what we call a proton image density you see here there is a uh, tear in the annulus with herniation of the nucleus inside the spinal canal treatment to start with conservative strict bed rest activity modifications احنا نسميها الممنوعات الخمسه نقول لا, لا تقعد بالقاع مرافق غير بمشرقي لا تصعد درج لا تشيل الثقل وصلاتك بدون ركوع وسجود فيزيوثيرابي وماي ادفايس بيشنت فوت سيرتن اكسرسايز بروجرامز اند انرجي سيميها Surgery will indicate it if the pain remains for more than three months despite your conservative treatment or if there is any progressive neurological deficit. We have two types, either open laminectomy, discectomy, or microdiscectomy. Here we open only one side according to the affected side and try to remove the lamina with the associated ligand nerve labrum then you retract the nerve root and you remove the disc and micro discectomy it's the same principle but the opening will be paramedian 
and insert frequent tube dilators to dissect through the muscles reaching to the facet joint then using electrical motor drill to remove the facet at the adjacent ligantum flavor and you remove the disc in the same manner by disc forceps Another clinical entity which is very important called Coda Equina Syndrome. In Coda Equina Syndrome, there will be compression or irritation for the lumbosacral nerve roots below the conus medullaris. It's usually below the level of L2. And this could be either by disc or stenosis or fracture vertebrae or even tumors. Here there will be usually an acute developed within less than 24 hours. There will be a lower motor neuron signs with weakness and paresthesia, but it will involve multiple root distribution. Usually both the knee and ankle jerk will be down, but the important here there will be an atomical, autonomic failure in form of urinary retention or later on will be an overflow incontinence and even fecal incontinence may occur. The sensory changes will usually affecting the uh, saddle area and it depends on which nerve root have been affected. But the most common actually is the saddle area deficit and even loss of libido in later appear. Treatment is an emergency condition and usually require a surgical intervention in less than 24 hours. Otherwise, any neurological deficit will remain permanent. But if you did the decompression in less than 24 hours, you may get a good recovery. And again, I repeat, recovery correlates with function at the initial consult, if the patient is ambulatory, he likely to continue to be ambulatory. And if unable to work, he unlike to work after surgery. This is one of our condition in which there is severe spinal canal stenosis on multiple levels. The patient is managed in supine position with a slight hip flexion to reduce the lower doses of the lumbar vertebrae, midline skin incision, dissection of the muscles using monopolar cautery. Here is the spinous processes. We remove it by what we call laminectomy shear, and then we use laminectomy punch to remove the lamina and we use disc forceps to remove this hypertrophied ligantum flavum and do foraminotomy to release the nerve roots. Thank you very much.